In all fairness, I really don't believe that Lesnar could end the streak. Upon returning, he lost to Cena just because Cena hit him with a chain, then did the AA or FU on the steel steps, got the pinfall that way. You know he's getting fucked up the entire match. Uh, he beat Triple H in 2012, but then in WrestleMania 2013, he lost to Triple H, won in Extreme Rules, and then beat Punk in SummerSlam, and he beat Big Show. So the guy has a miserable track record of two losses, and he's not around often. Someone joked around that the loser leaves for a whole year, the winner gets a vacation for a whole year. This is a match between part-timers, I don't believe that Lesnar is going to get a victory out of this. But this was hyped up for four years, ever since Undertaker showed up at the UFC event where Lesnar jobbed out to Cain Velasquez in that MMA match. That didn't mean shit in the long run. And he lost his title then. So they got their little match right now. And even though people said we've seen this feud before, the reason I'd like to see it again is because this time it's Undertaker as the dead man, as the guy that has a tombstone pile driver as his finisher, not the guy with the last ride power bomb. And that's the guy who wants to see Kick Lesnar's ass. It was perfect though. He had that entrance without the without the motorcycle. He came in with the blue lights. It was slow as shit. Took off his hoodie, and he stabbed that nigga with the pen. He stabbed Brock Lesnar with the pen. It was like that was the most brutal thing I've seen Les uh, Undertaker do in ages. Not crucifying someone, not <sighs> hanging someone in a noose. You know that weird psychological mind games he was playing with Orton, where Orton was getting like visions that made no sense. None of that bullshit. Stabbing someone with the pen when he was about like. So I take a was supposed to like sign the thing to get the match. But in the midst of that he actually stabbed Lesnar with the pen and then choke slammed him on the table. That was cool. <laughs> oh my god, that was awesome. I don't know what's so exciting about getting stabbed with a pen. But it's just the attention to detail. I mean, like, stab a boy for time. <laughs> and the reaction was quite so really good. Someone made a high pitched squeal during all of that. That is awesome. Well, there's a graphic about it, even though we know damn well that Lesnar really didn't get stabbed for pen. Whatever. It is what it is. That's what I'm looking forward to. Other than that, it's going to be Cena versus Bray Wyatt. That match hasn't been confirmed yet, and Cena actually did fuck up his own knee during that segment where he was getting jumped by the White family. Which he had it coming. <laughs> that boy, 
How do you call him out? And then get fucked up yourself. If you don't call a nigga up, you better fuck them up, or they better fuck you up. Don't fuck yourself up. But this will be interesting for John Cena because this will be his second non-title match of Mania, and instead of it being against an icon like The Rock that's trying to build him up, he's going to be building someone else up, and that's essentially the idea behind his feud. That Cena, he said to himself, "If you want to get that top spot, you really do have to go through Cena to get it." And that's essentially what this whole thing is about. Bray doesn't like the current order. He doesn't like the rules. He doesn't like the modern life and the machine. So, he doesn't like Cena either. And it's a good idea for a feud. I under don't understand half the shit that comes out of that guy's mouth. But I like seeing Cena take this role. Ironically, that was Time Warner Cable calling three times, non stop. I don't even feel bad about the fact that I broke that table. You know, slamming the phone repeated. I did it in the wrong side. I slammed it in the button side. If I did it in the back, it would have probably broken that phone. I wouldn't have been annoyed by that sound. But... You gotta be kidding me. And we also have Cena versus Orton. Orton. Nobody's looking forward to that match, but I'm loving how Batista's supposed to be this surprise face. Yet he's no longer surprised because they were forced to announce him due to all the internet spoilers. And he couldn't be faced because people are seeing him as a guy that took away Daniel Bryan's opportunity at the main event of Mania. Which isn't the case. But no one's looking for this bullshit ass match between two X Evolution guys. It makes sense in the storyline, but it sounds like filler. And it honestly feels that way, too. And I know he's not going to deliver an interesting match, because this little Batista has asthma or something. He can't do the cardio shit no more. Gets in the ring and he blows up in like two seconds. He's like me when I jerk off. Except I'm a little beast at it. And Orin? Orin's boring. Or Orin's like a mid-card guy that has a main event level status to him. But he fell off. So I really don't care. This match is going to be boring as shit because Orin's slow as hell. And he was lazy and he half-asses it. But I was right. He did get that main event spot. There's very little doubt that this isn't going to be the main event. And it seems we're treading towards Daniel Bryan versus Triple H, which is also going to be very interesting because that was originally CM Punk versus Triple H. And now that Punk is taking a sabbatical, he bounced 
still getting paid though. That's what a sabbatical is. You really want to do that bullshit with Triple H. You don't want to drop out to them. We may see Daniel Bryan drop out to Triple H. Because we all know Triple H needs that mania moment year in and year out. Even if he isn't really doing it anymore. And Triple H isn't going to blow up in the ring either. Batista is, and believe it or not, Batista is nine months older than Triple H. And you wouldn't know that because Batista's career as a wrestler started way later. So it just makes this whole thing seem juvenile. I for one am not looking. I for one am not looking forward to this mania as a pay per view for quality wrestling. But for quality riffing, oh man, this is gonna be all the rage. I'm gonna riff the shit out of this pay per view. You already snow. This is Mr. Walker Seven. And suck my dick.